Assalamu alaikum everyone and hello again. Welcome to another lesson of phonetics and a new lesson about another aspect of connected speech which is Jankta. So Jankta is one of the connected okay, speech uh, aspects uh, which are also practiced uh, by native speakers in their uh, speech. That's why we need to study it and know right how it functions. Clear? Good. Now, jakta as a word means what? Means a point in time. Especially this point is important uh, within uh, a series of events. All right. Point in time is important within a series of events. Now, phonologically speaking, in phonology, jakta refers to that, that phenomenon, can say phenomenon, right, uh, which represents uh, a pause or a slight delay, right, in a continuous flow of speech, right, that kind of pause or delay, right, in a continuous flow of speech is called jankta, and this jankta pause, right, uh, enables speakers as well as listeners to distinguish, right, so jankta is meant to distinguish between uh, utterances which are identical in right pronunciation and different in meaning different in meaning other uh, specialists in phonetics also consider it and define it as that kind of movement or transition between two consecutive sounds it means two successive sounds uh, uh, which allows, this transition allows, of course, listeners as well as speakers to distinguish also between uh, two utterances which are identical in pronunciation but different in meaning. Right. So, Jankta simply is, as you see here, has a special function to enable, right, listeners and speakers to distinguish between uh, uh, similar utterances, right, in pronunciation, why, whereas they are, in fact, different in meaning. Different in meaning. Let's take two simple examples for jankta. Jankta. Good. First one is, with this compound word, when I say ice cream, and when I say ice cream, so in the first case, as you see here, I have a compound noun, ice cream. Second one, I have a sentence which is ice cream. Right. So in rapid pronunciation, it's confusing. We can distinguish between the two utterances, which one is compound noun and which one is that sentence. Clear. So here, Jankta comes with its function to distinguish between the two utterances. Right. Now, if you compare between the first one and second one, the first one is what? Ice cream. As you see here, I have I, diphthong in ice, is a bit shorter. Ice cream. Right. And also the K, sound K, in cream is aspirated. Right. Aspirated. So, ice. I, shorter, and cream. K is aspirating. Right. Second utterance, sentence, ice cream. So here the I is longer. Right. If don't I is longer. Right. Longer. And also, compare the first, uh, between the first uh, compound noun and uh, the sentence, in the compound noun, as you know, the first part receives a primary stress. It means ice is stressed. Clear? Whereas the second one also I have scream. Scream is a, uh, a verb, content verb, that's why it is stressed. And I is unstressed because it's a pronoun. Clear? Pronoun. So here, to com distinguish between the first utterance, compound uh, noun, and second one, sentence, in the first one, the tongue is shorter, ice cream, and the cap aspirated. 
Whereas in the second one, huh, I said I scream. I scream. So I here is longer. Longer. And the stress is, here is on the second word, not on the first one as in the compound word. Right. So these elements, all right, uh, belong to juncta and uh, help us distinguish between the two types of utterances compound uh, noun and the sentence. Also, another example, I have uh, my train, it's my train, and my train. In the first one, what do I have? I have my train, as you see here, model verb plus train, might. The tongue I also here is pronounced in a short way. Huh? I is shorter. Right. And second example, I have possessive adjective or pronoun. It's my train. The I, the tongue I here is longer compared to the first one. Clear? First one. And also when I say my train, the tie here also is aspirated. The second example. Aspirated. So here also uh, the quality you can say of diphthong length. First one it is shorter, second one is longer, right? And the T, the second example, is aspirated. These elements also belong to the juncture, right? And uh, enable me to distinguish between the two utterances. Two utterances. Which one is model plus term? Which one is a possessive uh, pronoun adjective plus noun? Plus noun. Right. Now, just in the first example, uh, the K in uh, ice cream, K, okay, and also uh, in ice cream, the K here, which is aspirated, uh, uh, is the white space, the white space. It means the main element which allows me to distinguish between them. All right. Here also, uh, the T with its aspiration, uh, in the uh, second example, in the second part, my train, Possess the pronoun or adjective plus noun is also the uh, main distinctive element, all right, between the two utterances, and which helps me, of course, to distinguish between them. Go. Now, juncta has two types. There are two types of juncta. The first type is called close juncta. Close juncta. Now, here it's a kind of transition or movement from sound to sound within the same word. So closed juncta occurs within the same word between sounds. Movement between sounds within the same word. All right. Now, this movement is continuous and constant, and it has now intervening pauses, right, or delay. Within the word, the movement between sounds, right, is continuous without any right pauses or delays clear example like in the word train night blame uh, merry bright blue so all these are cases and examples of closed juncta of transition between two sounds right without any stoppage continuously within the same word. Second type of juncta is called open juncta. Open juncta, here also it's a kind of movement and transition that occurs at word boundaries. Right, at word boundaries, between, among words, among words, clear. Not within the same word, it's among words, right. Go. Boundaries here mean, of course, uh, the end of the first one and the following one, for example. Clear? Now, it is not continuous, this open juncta. I like the first one. Open juncta is not continuous, right? And there is a slight stoppage, clear, or pause of the last sound till it blends with the next. Last sound, okay. Uh, witness is a kind of pause or stoppage. Right, until it blends with the next sound, next sound. Right, example here, we have the four examples. I have a name and a name. See, they are similar in pronunciation. I have night rate, 
and the nitrate. I have its wings and its wings. I have my turn, my turn, and my turn, and my turn. Right. And of course, the two uh, preceding examples of uh, ice cream, right, uh, ice cream, and also uh, might rain, and might rain belong also to this category of open juncta. Open juncta here also we consider, okay, the length of uh, the sounds in the two utterances, right. And also, in case there is a kind of aspiration, huh? uh, the level of uh, uh, the sounds of one of the utterances, like in uh, cream, in ice cream, okay, uh, besides also to stress uh, position, which helped me also, helps me distinguish between, uh, right, uh, the different uh, similar utterances, clear utterances, thanks to Jankta and considering and knowing uh, well the word of pause is all right and also the other um, aforementioned uh, elements so that's all for juncta another aspect of natural speech huh? through a kind of pause or movement or uh, things like that which allows me to distinguish between utterances which are similar or identical even in pronunciation but different in meaning right Thank you so much and see you in another lesson. Good luck.